This is a wobbly old maple dining chair and it's covered in a beautiful antique guester pole. So what I'm going to do with this job is I'm going to strip the antique guester pole off and re-glue it so it's got some strength back to it. Now there's a number of ways you can strip paint or ester pole. The first one is with a scraping knife, which is what I'm going to use on this job. They're very cost effective. The second one is a hot air gun, which is basically a souped up hairdryer. And these are fantastic on, on flat surfaces or carvings. And the third method is a non-caustic paint stripper. Now I'm not an advocate of chemical caustic dips because they get into the timber and bleed the moisture out. Not only that, they fur the timber up so you're, it requires excessive sanding when you get to the finishing stages. It also gets into the joints and eats away at the glue, so I don't like it. There's also the environmental reasons against using chemical caustic dips. If you're remo removing paint, you need to use a lead-based test kit and of course, appropriate protection and disposal techniques. Before I can strip it, I need to pull the piece apart because it's much easier to work on that way. Now I've marked all the pieces and now I'm going to take these corner blocks out. Now sometimes these are nailed on as well so you need to get a screwdriver in there to prise it off. Now the front will come away from the back as two separate pieces with the side rails either joined to the front or the back. I'll be asking questions about the type of hammer I'm using later, okay? And of course the answer to the quiz was always use a wooden mallet on timber when you're pulling things apart. Now the side rails have to come off. up a little bigger. Now the front and the back can be broken down into their individual components. This is a good time to use that metho in the syringe trick I talked about earlier. I think that's off. Almost there. There we go. One more. Well, there's a chair in here somewhere, but thankfully we've marked all the pieces so I know exactly how it goes back together. This was a skinning knife and it's been beveled on one edge. You can do this yourself. It's that bird edge that you use which is on the opposite side to the bevel that we put on earlier. And by scraping it towards you in the same direction as the grain, you can get rid of that nasty ester pole. It's a very efficient way of removing it, much more efficient than sandpaper, 
and certainly cheaper than two or three coats of paint stripper. Now on turn pieces, you need to go in the same direction as the grain as well, but you need to also go down into the valleys like this so that you're scraping with the grain and not upwards in case you chip off any pieces. And just a little trick I use for these very tight turnings is just to run a hacksaw blade through them and they clean them out really well. All of the pieces have to be sanded because we want to remove all of the remnants of the old ester pole. Otherwise, when you put your finish on, they'll show up in the final result. And this is a piece that I haven't stripped yet or sanded in comparison to the one I have. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? We've still got to put a finish on yet. Now all the old glue has to be cleaned out of the joints because what happens over the years, the glue becomes brittle or crystallizes and it loses its adherence. So that's why the chair has become wobbly. See these dowel holes here? If you want to get the glue out of that, a good trick is to use a drill of exactly the same diameter as the hole. You just run the drill in there carefully and that breaks the old glue out. But be careful not to go right through the other side of the chair. In the reverse order that you pull it apart, you put it back together again, making sure to put glue in all the joints. Don't put glue on these back slats because they are always designed to float freely so that it would allow for expansion and contraction of the timber without splitting. Go, that's the back together. There we go, and that's the front together. Now all we have to do is join the front to the back. A good sign of quality is that the corner blocks have been screwed in place, not nailed. So you should always screw them back. There, now that's ready to put whatever natural finish you want to on it. Well, I thought I'd put on one of these very nice antique looking finishes on it. Makes it look old. That's the one. 